Okay, then let's move on to the next call. This is for actual communication. It's MPI send. And what are the parameters? So you pass an address of a buffer which contains the data that you want to send. You pass a count of how many elements you want to send. Then you pass a data type. That's the type of data that is contained in this buffer. And destination, that's again the rank, the rank of the process where you want to send the data. Then there is something called the tag. And finally, the communicator. Okay. For the time being, let's just assume we are using MPI com world. So everything is kind of like obvious. So what is tag? You know, a lot of times when you are doing communication uh, across processes, you're sending a lot of data, but once in a while you have some important message to send, which you maybe want to send urgently, right? So uh, if you, st in, in networks, like for instance, if you study, right, there's the control plane and the data plane, right? So you're sending data, but then you want to send some control messages or some important urgent messages. You can send them using a different tag. Right? So it's just a numeric identifier which tells you what is the kind of message. Right? And while receiving a message, you, know, you can specify what tag you want. So you can post a receive for a control message or a data message separately. Like that way. Suppose that you have sent a lot of messages and they're still on their way and it's going to take time to deliver and you want to send some other message, maybe saying that, okay, abrupt all this, this need not be done. Maybe somebody had started some process and then decided that they don't want to do some particular operation any longer. Right? So you want to abort some operation, so you could send a message on another tag. Right? So the other process can read the message on another tag before reading all the messages on some other tag. A lot of times you don't even end up using different tags, you just work with a single tag. Right? It does the job for you. And you can use it for other purpose, you can use it for different channels of data and so on. Right? So totally up to you. So the important thing is that for a given tag, all the messages are received in order. What is data type? So there are different types of data. So there is, this is uh, MPI defined type. So there's MPI character, MPI int, and so on, right? MPI float and so on, right? So there are different types of MPI. Type. So basically you'll find the definition for each of these, what is the size and, and so on, right? In, in the MPI specification, it's important to follow the MPI specification over here because you could possibly be dealing with different kinds of systems, right? Some system may be using little Indian, some system may be using big Indian and so on. You can't just directly communicate. You have to make sure that you're following the MPI specification, okay? MPI receive. So this is the call to receive the data, right? What are the parameters here? So you have the buffer in which you want to receive the data count we'll come to count in a second again data type right which we've discussed already then you specify whom you want to receive the data from that's the source again what tag you want to receive the data on the communicator you pass something called the status right so this is again a pointer to a structure that you're passing we will just talk about this okay okay so what is count over here so typically, you know, you don't always know how much data you're going to receive, right? If, if a sender sends a data, maybe some message, you don't know ahead of time what is the message you're going to receive. So you don't know the size, right? So this is basically nothing but the maximum size that you can receive. So why is there a maximum? Well, you are passing this buffer pointer, right? So if you are passing a buffer pointer, then you've allocated memory for it. So it has a limited size. So if somebody sends a very long message, let's say 100 MB or something, you may run out of memory and your memory may get corrupted. So you don't want to get into those kind of scenarios, right? So that's why you basically want to pass a count, which is the maximum size that you are able to receive, right? Now the actual size that you receive may not be this count, obviously. This is, this is the max that you have specified. So how do you get the actual size? So that is basically stored in the status and you can query it back from the status. We'll come back to that again. Okay, source and tag. So let's say that you're in a kind of a master-slave scenario, right? What's a master-slave scenario? That you have some master 
and you have a number of slaves and the slaves are basically doing some job right and as and when they complete they basically communicate back to the master that you know this job is done right so now when a master is waiting for a message from some slave saying that it is done so how would it wait what is the source it will specify which source is it waiting for the message from there's no source right it could expect the message from any of the slaves right so for that there is something called mpi any source so you can specify an actual source that I want to receive from rank number 5, let's say. Or you could just say MPI any source. If you say MPI any source, any message that it receives, it's going to pass it to the user. Okay. Alright, uh, similarly for tag, you can either say that I want to receive data from tag number 1 or something. Or you could say that I, I want to receive message for any tag. Right, so that is MPI any tag. Okay. All right. Status is a variable of type MPI status. So you have to declare such a variable and pass its pointer in MPI receive. And now you can invoke a function called MPI get count. Right. And what are the variables to this? The status that is returned in the MPI receive right data type which you have to specify so you have to know what data type it is and count what it gives you is the count of the data how many elements you have received so everything works not in terms of bytes but in terms of number of elements right number of elements of the particular type which is the mpi data type okay all right so status actually has other fields which you can directly query you can say status.mpi source and status dot mpi tag. So if you say mpi any tag or mpi any source, right? Once you finally receive the message, you want to know which tag it is of or which source it has come from. So you can actually just query these fields of status. That will tell you. All right. So this is some of the very basic. Uh, calls of MPI, right? So now that we have discussed these, so let's try to do something simple. 